It is. Good evening. It is November 14th, 2023, 6.03 p.m. This is the uh, bi-monthly meeting of the Norwalk Conservation Commission and Inland Wetland Agency. Uh, Alexis, could we have a roll call, please? Absolutely. Cheryl Brown. Here. Matt Pence. Here. Steve Coffey. Here. Catherine Knight. Here. And Heather Wrestling. Here. All right. Do we have anyone online from the public who would like to comment on anything that's not on our agenda tonight? Um, yes. I'm assuming that the hand raised is indicating. Uh, so we have uh, Diane Lortella, so I'll allow her to talk. Here you go, Diane. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Even Diane. Hey, good evening. Uh, I wanted just to um, uh, quickly comment that I'm very pleased uh, that the Conservation Commission presented some additional um, ideas for uh, the planning and zoning, the zoning regulation rewrite. I uh, sat in on that Zoom, on that virtual meeting, Steve, and liked uh, many of the points that were made. I'm working on some additional points, some that have to do with uh, water, uh, drinking water protection. And so when I finish putting them together, I'll forward them to Alexis and you. Love you to consider um, giving your uh, approval. Uh, it would have to do with different kinds of overlays. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the one thing I'd love you all to consider is the possibility of reducing the, num the amount of feet from that, or if it's possible uh, to increase the um, uh, upland review area mm. <laughs> uh that sort of thing um if it's possible and if other towns have done so uh the uh, might might be a different venue that this would that would be uh changed but that's something that many commissioners before you have uh thought about but since we're all in a rewrite mode why don't we maybe try it what what if we could get that uh increased so thanks for your all the work that you do and uh good night have a good evening thanks diane we'll definitely consider that okay anyone else have public comments looks like that is it excellent back to the agenda receipt discussion s23-629 284 new canaan avenue all right, so you should have gotten a very quick summary staff report on this one in the email that I sent you last week. And Mr. Carey from Land Tech is here representing um, the applicant. And uh, Brian, if you want to share your slide and go through. Yep. Kind of Thank going, you. Go for it. So uh, I'm Brian Carey, uh, professional wetland scientist with Land Tech with offices in Westport, Connecticut. Um, we're representing the applicant, which is AJ Penna. Um, this this property has been in front of you, I believe, a couple different times over the years. Uh, the most recent being um, because of a recent violation that was resolved uh, with the benefit of staff. Um, the property is located at 284 New Canaan Avenue. Um, it's directly, uh, it's located directly west of the Mayor Parkway. Um, currently, there, there's uh, a lot of traffic issues that are occurring outside the entrance of the property um, due, to the, due to people trying to get on the merit um, and exiting and trying to get on the merit. Um, so what the issue is on site is they're running into a lack of parking space as uh, the business has kind of increased in size um, over the years a bit. Um, so what we're looking to do, um, what the applicant is looking to do is add a, a moderate amount of parking um, for his staff um, to the front of the building. Um, there's an existing uh, constructed wetland area um, that I believe is used as a um, kind of a detention basin with a head wall here. Um, and they want, they would like to put in a driveway access 
um, to basically put in six additional parking spaces. Uh, the property was formerly a DOT um, garage, um, I think up until 2014, I believe. Um, so there have been some improvements made, um, but nothing, no additional parking has been added for the growing office. Um, we did do um, drainage, which is compliant with the uh, city of Norwalk engineer uh, requirements. Um, but due to the just the tightness of this of the spot, um, where the the access driveway is pretty close up to the existing head wall um, that that exists there now. Um, previously, as part of the violation, um, they did put in a, uh, a great amount of buffer plantings, um, and uh, those are still in in place and and functioning well. Um, I don't have much to say about the details page. Um, here is the actual uh, location. Um, oops, sorry about that. Here's the actual location um, where the where the parking lot will be uh, situated. Uh, we'll actually be cutting into this slope um, and bringing in a bit of fill um, to level this off and create the parking area. Um, here's the parking area looking from east to west. Uh, you can see this wetland area, this small depressional wetland area. Um, I do believe it is con and it is con a constructed wetland area based on the steepness of the slopes and the presence of the headwall. I don't think this is a, a naturalized wetland um, at the site. You can see the existing conditions of the wetland. Um, this is just there's a small stream kind of running through here into this headwall. Um, and then the uh, the wet the water course actually runs um, underneath the site uh, if you can see it here. Um, so the this is the this is the wetland here. Um, it's basically a uh, it's aqueous uh, soil, so that's a that's a disturbed soil. Um, the piped head wall comes out here and then runs down um, along the border of the site, and I believe it discharges out this way. Um, that being said, you can see the issue with the parking um, for his for his staff. Um, a lot of trucks come in and out of here all day long um, as part of the business, um, which, uh, as you know, AJ Penna has the uh, contract for Aquarian and Water Company for all of their um, installation and maintenance of their water lines um, and emergency service. Um, here's a view looking. Um, directly north or directly west, I'm sorry, at the wetland. Um, and then uh, I think that's really it. Um, again, uh, you know, it's a small project. It is, uh, we are detaining um, the requirements under the, the city of Norwalk's uh, engineering. Um, and uh, we're hoping to minimize the amount of disturbance as possible. Um, but we did look at, uh, as far as alternatives were considered, we did look at uh, putting in a larger parking area, um, but the, the the zoning setback in this area is creating, uh, wouldn't allow us to do that without seeking a variance. Um, so this is the minimal size of the parking that um, really benefits their needs um, while also being uh, protective of wetlands. Um, that being said, I can answer any questions um, that, the, that the commission might have. Um, uh, regarding the proposal. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Well, do any commissioners have questions? Um, were any other alternatives looked at as yeah, far as so locations I, for parking? Yeah, so we actually had, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I can, I can, let me see, it take me a second. But we did look at making this a much larger parking area. Um, again, this this dotted line, if you can see that, this dotted line is actually the front setback of the property. Um, so we can't go into that without having to seek a variance. Um, so this this was the most feasible and prudent alternative that we felt was protective of wetlands, but also um, provided the the uh, applicant with what they needed to kind of resolve their, their parking situation. Again, this is kind of a tenuous 
situation based on the amount of traffic coming in and out of the site. Um, so they're just trying to alleviate this this side street or this this uh, access way parking. Where where is the parking now that exists? So the parking now, um, this is an, a little bit of an older map. The building line is right here. Yeah. Um, so there's 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 parking in front of the building, um, but just due to the size of the site, there some of the met, some of the staff has been parking along the access way, and then yeah. the back of the parking, the back of the 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 property, obviously opens up a bit. Um, but this is used for construction yard. This photo is a little. This photo is from the GIS, but it's a little bit out of date. Um, there is parking. You know, there's there's some parking in this area. Um, but they're just trying to organize the site a little bit better mm -hmm. uh, because currently, you know, it is a construction yard. They have grown a bit in business, um, just the amount of work that's coming in and out of the property. Um, and they would like to provide their their office staff with uh, some, some uh, appropriate parking in the front of the building. Well, let's be completely honest. The main interest of the building is right there at that corner, right? Yes. So that's that's driving force. So I think with the questions being asked is why shouldn't we provide parking elsewhere that's not within the Upland Review area? So this the whole site is basically in the Upland Review area. There's several wetland systems on the property. If you were to look at the uh, and most of the property is already being utilized for one function or another. Um, so you can see that there's numerous wetland systems on the property. This one probably being um, I don't want to say the least viable, but this is a man-made system. I believe it was built for stormwater management. Um, some of the other portions on the property, um, and, and basically anything that's going to be done on this property would need a wetland permit. Um, it's all or within, the, it's all within the wetland boundary. Um, and there seems to be a lot of trees in the back towards the back of the property. Yeah, also, and then, right, so. you know, that, so... Uh, if you go up again to uh, the GIS, yeah, I mean, the, this is all wetlands in, in these right. areas. So we, you know, the, the site's kind of boxed in. Um, yeah. There's the stream that comes through here. Um, so, you know, again, talking about feasible and prudent alternatives, I mean, they're really, they're, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul by, you know, by putting store, you know, parking over here then it's running into their operations. They do because of the emergency nature of their business being on call all night. Um, they do have to keep materials on site um, because they do respond to all of the uh, Aquarians, um, basically water main breaks um, any any time of the day. Um, so again, um, you know, we did look at all, all other alternatives. Um, to put the parking area. There are buried utilities in here. Um, you can see all these manholes. I'm not quite sure uh, what they are. Um, I mean, this property um, was has been developed since the 60s by the state of Connecticut. Um, so th this just seemed like the easiest um, and most prudent alternative to kind of alleviate some of their parking issues. Uh, Brian, does does so the head wall at the you know right bottom right hand side of the the constructed wetland you know adjacent to what we're proposing here? Um, oh, actually, if you keep it on the plan, that'd be wonderful. That's that's not changing at all. No height wise or anything. Okay. No. Nope. And then the the driveway that's skirting by it is pitched toward the wetland or toward the building. So it's actually, this is pitched um, into a uh, street where it will be caught by this catch basin. Um, this area will be caught by this catch basin. So uh, two, so the grade goes from 204 to 202. Um, and then it would, it, either, the goal is to catch it into this catch basin here, and then this catch basin there. So what we're doing is there's no change to the hydrology of the wetland that's directly no. adjacent to this, but there's a greater, and I'm sorry, Catherine, I didn't see you had your hand up. There is, like you said, they're boxed in. Any adjustment that's made to the surface water of the site is most likely going to affect one of the wetlands. 
anything we've looked at on site just because of the presence of, of wetlands throughout the entire property would require uh, an application to the commission for your review. Got it. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Knight. So if I is this for six parking bays? Yes. And how many parking bays do they currently have? Uh, I'm not quite sure. They're not laid out uh, specifically uh, out there right now. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, it's not, so as part, they, they want to go in there and stripe all the existing parking as well. It's it, the, the site's kind of in a uh, rush. You can see, uh, uh, I don't know if I have the picture. I'm sorry, am I making everyone sick? Uh, uh, yeah, they, they plan on, you know, milling and paving this at some point and putting in the striped parking. I, I don't know. I could get that answer for you, though. I mean, it would be helpful to understand what their parking needs are and, and what existing parking they currently have, because it's not clear, you know, they've got a lot of space, but, it, you know, is there some optimization that can be done with the existing? Well, what I'm confused about is, isn't there a proposed planting bed right there to the northwest of the building, which looks to be a larger area than the six parking spots that you're putting to the south of the building? Yeah. I'm I'm Steve. I'm not sure where you're referring to. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> up up uh, on the up side of the building. I see. To the immediate yes. west of the building, Brian. Yeah, sorry. It's where it says that west. proposed sidewalk ramp, and then. There it is. Your mouse is yeah. on it. And then follow that. The... There you go. There you go. And that appears to be parking currently. It is. Yeah. Hmm. So that would not I'm be not parking. Sure. It I'm would be sure. a bed now, a planting bed, and so it wouldn't be parking. No, I don't. I don't believe that is currently. Uh, I'm looking at a current aerial photo, and there's cars there. So. Yeah, there's cars there. Uh, I'll have to clarify that. I mean, yeah. Let's let's get more information about that. We're not deciding anything tonight, but you're, I think, picking up what we're putting down. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Do any do any other commissioners have questions or additional questions? Okie dokie. Um, thank you, Mr. Carey. Thank you. Will we see you later or will we later tonight or or at our next uh, meeting, which is, I believe, beginning of December, right? Yes, Alexis? December. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Take care. To okay. Moving right along to public hearings. No, wait, hold that. 622. Um, I will uh, move to um, change the agenda to skip public hearing since that starts at seven and also skip the immediate discussion and or decision because it applies to the same property um, and go ahead to item seven on the agenda, which is enforcement actions. B20, oh, I'm sorry. Um, can I have a second? I'll second it. Oh, okay. Cheryl got it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Uh, so moving on to uh, V23-1058, 35 Weatherbell Drive. Looks All like right. Mr. Pascarella is on, online to go through this. Yeah. Yes, he is. And so I'll just um, quickly go over um, what a show cause hearing is. So anytime that uh, staff issues a enforcement order state statute um, requires that the agency hold a show cause hearing where they are presented with the reasons why an order has been issued and then um, the respondent or the, the person that received the order 
um, gets the opportunity to present to the agency any additional information. And then at the end of that, the agency actually makes the decision whether to uphold, um, modify or uphold or withdraw the order. So I'll just explain why, why, um, why I've done this to, and why we're here tonight and then uh, give the floor to uh, the property owner. Um, so we issued a notice of violation on August 29th, um, 2003. And that notice of violation had three directives. One was to um, delineate the wetlands on the property by September 19th, um, submit a corrective action application by October 10th, and then implement um, fully whatever approved corrective action um, permit is issued. And in mid-September, the property owner contacted me and let me know that he was having some a variety of issues. And so I sent a September 12th um, email that granted an extension to October. Um, it bumped both back um, the delineation to October 3rd and then filing the application to October 24th. Um, and then um, on October 11th, after not getting the soil scientist report yet, um, um, sent out a reminder and talked to the to the uh, respondents some more. And then um, uh, the um, on November 7th is when I issued the order and it has revised deadlines of November 21st for the delineation and um, the 19th of December. And so um, this arose, um, the um, property owner received a zoning permit to do um, some renovations to the house and, and that included the construction of a rear uh, deck. The uh, conservation office leave did a sign off if I recall um because we determined that there were wetlands in the backyard um but the, the deck was probably minor enough and and probably far enough away from the uh, wetland war of course not to warrant a permit and um maybe, maybe i'll just switch to share my screen Hold on a second Okay, so just to take a step back, uh, Weather Bell is a, um, a road off of uh, Chestnut Hill Road. So this is Chestnut Hill Road here. And um, this is the, um, the Wilton Town Line. And then this is the uh, Westport Town Line for your bearings. Um, and so you go down Weather Bell and there's a, kind of a large wetland system mostly off um, in Westport, behind like the Three Three Bears restaurant, large wetland system, and this is uh, kind of a, a tributary to that. Sorry about all the markings. So this is a uh, number thirty-five, um, and I'll explain all the all the, <laughs> the scribbles. But this is an aerial photo from um, the state from. Um, previously in, in 2021. And you can see that there's not much of a, a rear yard and there's um, a bit of vegetation, uh, woodland in the back. This area, let me actually go. Um, the 2019, it have to be a, a, a very wet, wet year, but you can see this, uh, uh, darker area. This is uh, clearly standing water. And then uh, this area um, is kind of a more typical non-inundated wetland area. Let me just go back to 
this master. Um, fast forward to, to March 2022, and um, the scope of work for the for the deck um, ended up including some um, some grading work. And um, Uh, and then this is what it looks like today with the lawn area coming out to, to this area. So going back to my scribbles, uh, this I believe is approximately where the um, wetland may actually um, extend to. Um, the, the blue lines are just, the blue circles rather, are uh, dots where I note existing trees and these trees are all still there. The orange is where there are large, were large trees, but were uh, no longer there. And then the, the green markers are approximately where the elevation um, changed when um, I used this transect. I had more of them, but it was even busier map. Let's see if I can get this to come up first now. No, it doesn't come up when I'm using Zoom for some reason. Um, but with this uh, aerial map, it also includes uh, topographic information where you can get a transect based on um, aerial photographic, photogrammetric information. Um, and in the previous cross sections, if you look at the cross section prior to the work, um, there's a kind of a sloping yard or sloping earth that then kind of flattens out at about where these green pins are all, all the way across. And so then today um, it's this this area that I believe was uh, fill it, filled in to make a more level yard um, that is either in a wetland or extremely close to a wetland. Um, at the edge of the, the, uh, the boulder row that now defines the lawn uh, woodland interface. There was skunk cabbage growing right up, up to the wall. Um, so we're uh, concerned that there, um, you know, maybe wetlands very proximal, if not underneath that area. So that's why the notice and the order were issued. I will say that I know that the, um, the respondent has tried hard to find um, the professionals needed to get the information that's being requested in both the notice violation and the order. I know that he has, um, in, in, I'm sure that he will explain further, but he's engaged with um, at least two different um, people to delineate wetlands and uh, that has not yet happened. So that's why I issued it and I'm Give you, give you the floor, Mike. Thanks, Alexa. Alexis, I appreciate it. I don't know how she speaks French, but then translates it into English because she will tell you that when we sat down on September 6th to talk, I'm looking at her like I have no idea what you're talking about. But she, uh, she definitely um, explains things and has been uh, very um, understanding about my uh, my plate. Um, she's right. I've actually engaged in four people um, to try to get them. Um, I spoke to today. Um, let me get his name. Uh, Jay Fain. Jay Fain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Spoke to him today. He says, well, it's, it's very tough with the holiday coming up, but he's going to try to get out here. And I told him that, you know, we had until you know, uh, the 21st of, uh, of November to get that. So he thinks he should be able to get that. I'm waiting for um, his response, but we did talk today. So hopefully after um, a death in the family, troop, two trips out to Phoenix and trip to Philadelphia and whatnot, trying to get things in order. Um, hopefully we're we're on the right track. So I apologize for all the delays. Trying to get somebody out here has been a nightmare. Um, when I took ownership of the property, um, 
Alexis and I had talked on a previous property that we were looking to purchase. And um, you know, I told on uh, July 11th of 2021, at 8.50 in the morning, I had emailed Alexis and said, hey, we finally landed at 35 Weatherbell Drive. And since I had no history on the property and no knowledge of any wetlands, I asked for any any maps that she has, you know, to send them. I also explained to her that a lot of the trees that she pointed out were taken down were either uh, diseased with black rot, black rot um, ash trees with boars in them, or large oak trees which um, turns out the bases on them were rotted and they were they were pretty close to the house. So for safety reasons, insurance reasons and whatnot, they pretty much had to come down. Um, I'm sure some of the trees that are also listed in that Alexa showed you on the map that are in, you know, on the line or wherever close there, um, I would venture to guess that those trees also have rotted bases and when you're playing with 80 foot tall oak trees you, you don't want those coming down so i i'd reached out and and uh, to the department to try to get information on those maps um you know to whatnot um and in the in the process of uh going for the deck permit i was dealing with uh, josh joshua in the office and um, when I went to go pick up the permit, he had indicated that there were wetlands in the far back corner of the property. So being that there's a lot of invasive plantings and Alexis will tell you, even she doesn't want to go back there because of the poison ivy and everything. Um, I emailed um, Joshua on October 27th at uh, 2021 and, uh, at 2.44 p.m. asking him if I can get a map of the wetlands. So that was the second time I've asked for for some information on that. Um, he responded uh, that same day at uh, 2.35 p.m. That's it. For your inquiry about the wetlands on the parcel, I've asked the conservation official. They have confirmed that the rear half of the lot seems to be wetlands. Work within that area we, would be subject to review from conservation. However, the deck is off of that area, so you would not need a conservation permit for the deck. Um, so um, he then said um, in one of the emails that you have to contact the conservation uh, department um, regarding that. So on October 28, 2021 at 6.35, I sent an email conservation i said would you please provide a map of any wetlands at 35 weatherbell drive with along with any measurements and setbacks off the house um that was not responded to so um so the only thing i had to go by was the back half of the property so that's pretty open to interpretation um so i had gone on the gis maps and haven't hadn't seen anything um and then with help of um, this, somebody I know who's a uh, consultant for the state DEP, we went on to the Yukon maps and couldn't find anything. We also went to the federal maps. Um, I also, hopefully, be, depending on my schedule, to run up to the DEP library room to see what I can find. Um, that may change to, you know, with um, with um, it is came. I'm sorry doing the um being able to do the soil delineations but i wanted to get something so um and so based on being the back half of the property i sort of um and and not seeing anything on the maps the gis maps and so on and uh you know maybe i wasn't looking at the right thing but i clicked on every, every possible thing i could find um that that work had you know taken place so now we're going from the back half of the property to even further so you know alexis will tell you that you know i'm fairly easy to work with and you know we want to get this resolved you know as soon as possible in fact i think i told you alexis that you know, i'd like to get it you know if we can have that finished by september i'd be very happy um but i unfortunately i can't drag people here to do the work so um other than that, you know, um, I know I have some burden of proof. I, I, 
the city may have some burden of proof as well, but you know, we'll, we'll cross that road if we need to. But um, you know, I'm willing to you know get this rectified and figured out, and hopefully everybody can end up living happily ever after. Um. Okay. Do any commissioners have questions? Thank you, Mr. Besco. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time. I know how much time you all put into this and it's not easy. So I thank you for your time. You bet. Well, don't, don't run off because we need to decide if we are going to withdraw, modify, or enforce um, the order. So I think uh, unless someone wants to jump in, I think the, the biggest issue I see just logistically is in the um, cease and restore order. Um, there is that, you know, November 21st date by which a report and field sketch from soil scientists shall be submitted to the conservation office. So if that's not reasonable, which is what it sounds like, um, Alexis, do we have, what sort of um, leeway do we have to push that back to November 28th or December, whatever, whatever? Yeah, you have uh, whatever it'll be way. So you Carte can... Okay. Mr. Pascarella, what do you think? What is reasonable? You're the one that's out there uh, hunting I'm down hoping, scientists. I'm hoping we don't have to go past June or November 21st. I, I, um, I'm hoping well, but we get it... an answer for him soon. Um, Alexis will tell you that we've, uh, we have more emails than the printer has paper to print out um, going back and forth working on this so uh, can i tell you november 21st i sure hope i can but well it's not a matter of desire it's a matter of logistic right so there's this we're all just part of a machine here okay so there's machinations mm -hmm. that are happening um i think let's just set it up for the best chance for success right so um Let's... Yeah, and I, I would I would agree to to it, I think it does make sense to to bump it back um because um with with an order, Ms. Mr. Pascarella, there there is not a lot of uh it takes away any staff leeway for uh extensions of time. So okay. I just want to make make be clear with that that once once the agency says here's a deadline, I I don't have any um any room to to wiggle okay. any, anymore? So I guess I would I would recommend um, maybe just uh, bumping it two weeks because I don't think that any uh, the work was was done. You know, it's not like it's in progress. The 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 damage has been done, and I don't think that there's um, any opportunity to physically implement any plan um, in the next few months. So I I think you're looking at you know, if if there is an assuming there is some kind of implementation that comes out of this, it's not going to happen until the spring. All so, right. So then I would I would say then we would bump the report and field sketch submission date from November twenty first to December fifth. That's two weeks. And then um, the submitting of corrective action permit. I mean, I say January February on that. Um, I mean, here's the deal. It, there's no reason for us to make it any harder than needs to. If if you are able to give us what we need before these deadlines, then everybody's happy, right? But we don't want to set unreasonable expectations. I, I appreciate that. And please uh, call me Mike. Okay. Alexis, you have you have a last name like mine. <laughs> please just call me Mike or Mike P is fine. Okay. You can do away with the formality as far as I'm concerned. Well, do you have an idea then? Um, Maybe January 23rd. January 23rd. Okay. Because you don't want to push it too far back because, as you know, the permitting process can take a while. So right. you don't want to. Uh... Okay. Yeah. Okay. And certainly I if I have it. anything beforehand, it's it'll be there as soon as I have it. Awesome. So, okay. Um. Okay, so then I would move to um, amend. I'm sorry, did any other commissioners have questions? I'm kind of pushing this along. No, okay. Uh, I would move to 
what is it? Amend the season uh, restore order B23 1058 um, as discussed. So under Directive 1, change the date to December 5th. Under Directive 2, change the date till January 23. No change to um, Directive 3. The show cause hearing shall be. That, that's fine. That's, today. Yeah. that's now. Okay. Those are my only amendments. Uh, do I have a second? Or Alexis, am I going too fast? No, Matt, Matt seconded. Any discussion? Um, all right. Well, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Okay. So good luck. Let's, I'm sure it Thanks. sounds like you've been in contact with Alexis. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll know more next time we see you. I certainly hope so. Okay. And I thank you all for your time, Alexis. Thank you very much. We'll be in contact as always. And, yep. Uh, we'll you know, send you an you know. update. Yep. If I don't talk to you before, have a have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you. Me too. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Moving on to bond release. We still have 16 minutes before seven o'clock. Um, bond release slash reduction requests. S21-576-70, which lane? Okay, this was a, a corrective action uh, filling in and adjacent to a, to a well in the water course. And uh, they had to uh, remove um, uh, some of the fill and then restore native plantings to some of the wetlands. Um, that fill removal and um, the planting was done with the exception of, there were two large tulip trees that they had proposed to uh, potentially remove because they were concerned they were hazardous and your permit required that they replace um, any removed trees with um, a new two and a half, two and a half inch uh, caliper native tree. So they had removed, um, upon our, the inspectors went out in early October and they found that um, for the most part, all the planting plan was uh, pretty good. They had some, some dieback of shrubs, but they had actually preemptively planted more than required. So that worked out fine. And um, one of the tulip trees had been removed, um, but no uh, replacement tree had been installed. So they just installed that the other day. So I just wanted to let you know that one of the trees was um, not there for the two full growing seasons. It was there for two full weeks, if that. Um, and then at this point, they um, don't have the funds to remove the other um, large tulip tree. So that is still standing. So Okay, so are we are we considering a partial release? What would be the equivalent value of that one? It's uh, up to you. I will look up the, should have preemptively known to look up their bond form. I will tell you. Let's see. So the 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 per tree is uh, usually calculated a little up, a little um, low, honestly, at uh, two hundred and fifty dollars a tree. Okay. So I don't know if that's worth holding on to or not. It's up to you. Anybody thoughts? What's your time and effort worth, Alexis? Oh, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it's really up 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 to you guys. Um, you know, we um, we're certainly in that neighborhood uh, frequently. There's enough going on along which lane that um, the inspectors are are down there relatively uh, frequently. So, but um, it's just a matter of so on our end, we we review it in front of you. Uh, we write them a letter. We send a memo to the comptroller's office. Um, and uh, the controller's office cuts cuts a check. 
it's kind of the the uh, process. I'm terrible with money. Anybody? <laughs> it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Out of two thousand two hundred ninety. That's like that's what ten percent. Yeah. Order magnitude. Anybody? Numbers. No. In the words of Elsa, let it go. But that's my opinion. <laughs> Anybody else? No opinions? Sheesh. Oh, yeah. I will move to release the bond in full. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, easy enough. Uh, moving on to S21, 588, Leslie Lane. Ah, uh, similar, another 2021 uh, corrective action um, uh, activity permit. This one involved the deposition of wetlands, uh, of wetlands, of wood chips in a wetland. Um, the wood chips were removed. They did a planting plan that was um, a lot of plants, but, but smaller plants. So those were a little harder for the inspectors to assess um, a percentage of those that were still alive. Um, the, uh, I'd say that with, there was definitely more mortality than kind of a, uh, the usual planting plan that we see where you have kind of a large shrub and owners are pretty, pretty, you know, spot on. If it's dying, it's clear. Whereas these small little ones, it's, it's less so, but, I'd say that the um, um, it was certainly all planted, um, and the um, the the wetland the, it is the property has since changed hands. So the bond owner does not actually own the property anymore, and they didn't switch the bond or uh, transfer the bond during the sale. Um, it's not being maintained as lawn. It's not being um, filled with wood chips. It is a um, uh, somewhat vegetated wooded wetland. It, all the canopy trees are still there. So there, there is a lot of shade, uh, a little bit hard maybe to establish everything that was planted. I can show you Boy. photos if that helps. <laughs> really couching on both of these. <laughs> How do they not transfer a bond? I don't understand how that. Yeah, I don't know. We always recommend um, that um, when if a property transfers and there's an open bond, to be sure to transfer your bond. Be sure to transfer your bond. And some people just choose not to. I really don't know why. Okay. Yeah. So the bond goes back to the original owners and not the new the owners? The original owners, yep. Correct. And the size of the plants, was that what we approved? It was. It was an Alexandra mock plan, um, and it had a lot of little plants. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you said they died off. So, but then if. Um, well, I don't, they're, they're hard to see. I'll show you photos real quick. I'll, um... We have eight minutes. We have eight minutes. We've got plenty of time. Let's see what this the easiest like way day. to share is. We'll do. All right. I think this is the easiest way to so this is kind of what it looked like uh before is the wood chips in the in the front area and then um sorry um let's see if i can find my computer is going so slow um so these are actually the some of the plants if you can see them in the leaf litter they were planted in um, the fall of 2021. And so, so these are the, the plants. And then 
these are some of the uh, grasses that were planted. And again, here's kind of little plants and then the, it's all these little um, little guys. So it's it, this is when they were planted. <laughs> there you can see some of the, um, the small plugs of um, native, native grasses here and along, here's another patch of them. So this is a pond planting and they're, they're, hard, <laughs> they're hard to find. Um, more of them. There's me and, you know, the guy pointing to them. <laughs> um, but again, so that's what you have at the time of planting. And then this is, um, let's see, what they found. So these are, these are the grasses, you know, it is, um, this was September. So they had kind of started to turn, turn uh, brown. There are some of the some of the grasses. Um, some of the shrubs are alive, but then let me see if I can find um, some not so much. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like in the other photo. I'm kind of standing here looking out, and um, so it's this this area. So there's definitely some areas where there's just not a lot of vegetation, and then there's areas where there where it has build back in a little bit. Um, so it's kind of this this area here. I mean, is that going to get totally overrun by invasives by next season? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd <laughs> say it's uh, possible. I mean, you already got your wild strawberry. Um, I mean, the good news is it's, it is very shaded, and the invasives haven't cre crept in um, too much yet. Um, Those wood chips. That's kind of uh, the area. So again, there's these little tiny things and there, you know. But what's the alternative here? I mean, like if we don't really, like he doesn't have control over the property. If you walk right. Street, so. Oh, well, we'd have to work something out with the property owner. Yep. And that's why you transfer your bonds when you transfer a property title. Um, I don't know. I mean, so, half of me says the design really wasn't set up for success, but the other half of me says, well, if it's just going to become a, a mess, then we didn't achieve what we had intended. So, for the shrubs, what do you have like a sense of maybe the percentage that have survived? Um, da, 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 da. let me find. I don't. I don't see any of the grass. Yeah, uh, yeah. The grass was in the uh, further back. Um, hold on a second. Um, <laughs> I have so many files you have <laughs> no idea what's what's behind here um so there were 10 28 33 shrubs planted so a mix of um what was proposed was a mix of red osier dogwood summer sweet winter winterberry and swamp azalea, when they went out, they found about 17 native shrubs that they could identify as being planted. You know, sometimes it is hard to tell what's mm -hmm. kind of growing and then what has been planted. Um, they did find the, uh, the Carex bugs um, throughout, so those are the grasses, but the, um, they did not find evidence of many of the other plugs. Um, they did note that there is evidence of significant deer brows everywhere. Wow, oh, so the deer uh -huh. raided them all down too. So uh, a lot of the other plugs, in addition to the uh, the carrots, the, the grasses were uh, lobelia, um, little blue stem, sensitive fern, Bone flower, 
bluebells and cardinal flower. Nothing that's necessarily easy <laughs> easy to grow. It was as far as like they Not said dogwood was in there. Did you see, see that? I didn't see that in the picture. I didn't know. They what? they just said when they inspected the 15 native shrubs observed. If I remember right, he didn't he planted all the he did plant the whatever it was the 30 some um native shrubs. Um, but he had he did make some substitutions. Um, so for the shrubs, it's about fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Alexis, is it possible to release half the bond? Um, you can. Yes. Would that cause you like administrative burdens? I mean, they didn't transfer the bond. It doesn't sound like they restored it. Um, yeah. I don't know if, um, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on how you see this moving forward. I think it's tough to, um, it's going to be tough to, to, um, it's just a bad situation of having a new owner and a, a different bond, bond owner. Um, uh, bond holder. So I don't know if releasing half the bond, if that's, I don't think you're going to see any um, activity or change. It's not enough to, um, like, so worst case, the reason you take a bond, especially for a corrective action application, is if the, the, um, the, the property owner uh, refuses to do any of the work, and then we would we would hold a, a hearing to seize that bond and then use that those funds to to do the work. And you've you've done that once in my my tenure here. Um, and I don't know if the uh, two thousand the the amount of bond held is a little low for um, the the planting. I'd say. What could we get done for twenty six hundred bucks? Like, oh, I mean. Contractors barely get their tools out of the truck for. Right. That. I mean, you could. They're fairly easy planting, but I don't know. I'd have to spec out the um, the cost of the plants uh, today. Well, I'm not inclined to just say I'll screw it just because somebody screwed up and then they walked away, essentially. I mean, I'm sorry, they created a problem and then walked away. I'm sure they're perfectly happy to forget about 2662 would be my guess. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but um, if you think we can get something done, that's at least better than what we've got now. I say we do not release it. And I don't know. That's my vote. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with that because there's no recourse to the new owners and, unless you reissue a violation, you know, and they weren't even in the ones I have an issue with. Yeah, like yeah. they weren't the ones in violation. They shouldn't have to be responsible for it. That person is. They didn't remediate it in a way that, you know, so. Yeah. All right. So I will move, unless there's more discussion, I'll move to not release the bond. And um, that's a second from Mr. Pence. Oh, yeah. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, no. All in favor? Oh, sorry. No, uh, we can vote. Sorry, okay. I just didn't know if we had a seize the, what you were saying about. Yeah. Catherine, was that a question or was that a vote to say yay to my motion? I'm jumping ahead to the vote. I'm voting. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Cool. Unanimous. Okay. So um, let's. Uh, I always forget this, Alexis. Do I have to move to amend the agenda again because I did the, stay right. with my initial motion when I wanted to go back to the? I don't think hearing? so. I think you can declare that at seven o'clock and that seven o'clock your public hearings begin. Let's I think it's at seven o three, and I think we need to do the public hearing for S twenty three dash six twenty six one ninety nine Newtown Avenue. Okay. Um, and I don't see, well, I guess, would I see people from the public who would want to comment? Um, um, yes. Do we have they, anybody? They, they, they are there. So, there they um, okay. yep. 
Do you want to give a um, spiel? So we'll start with opening the public hearing and Amelia, are you there? I don't have the file in front of me. Yes, I am here. Uh, but if you can confirm that the um, legal notice was posted in the paper and that the we did receive notice from the applicant that all the abutters were mailed notice as well. Yes, two legal notices were run and we do have um, confirmation that neighbors are notified. Okay. All right, so with that, um, we'll go through for, for the public. I'll just explain the commission's um, public hearing process. The applicant has the opportunity to, to, to present or represent re the proposed uh, activity. The commissioners can ask questions throughout. When we get to the to the public hearing comment, um, you can uh, use the raise your hand feature, which you already have done, to um, indicate that you would like to speak. We will um, allow you to speak. It's kind of a, a one and one and done situation, and it's not a back and forth conversation. You can um, the the purpose of the public hearing is for you to provide additional information to the agency members that they can use in their consideration of the application. For most applications, they're looking at the submitted materials from the applicant, um, the verbal testimony from the applicant, and any comments from staff. When there's a public hearing, they get to um, get additional information that you have um, and any particular knowledge that you have about the wetlands or, or the property itself. Um, so you'll have uh, one opportunity to make your comments. You can ask questions that won't be answered um, right then, but you can list any questions that you have. And then the um, public hearing returns to the applicant. The applicant has an opportunity to rebut and uh, we've encouraged them to answer any questions that have been asked by the um, public but are not required to. And um, if the agency feels that they have enough information to render a decision, they'll close the public hearing and then uh, later on in the e evening, they will have a discussion about the application and um, either make a decision or punt to the decision to the next meeting. So that's my description of the pro process. And I guess, Commissioner Blackie, if you're, if you're ready, you want the applicant to present? Please. Evening, Mr. Martin. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Dean Martin, a professional engineer with Grumman Engineering, LLC, located in Norwalk. I am uh, representing the applicant on this property, this project, uh, which is located at 199 Newtown Avenue. Um, let me just see if I can stick this up for you. Here we go. Did that come up? No, nope. not yet. Not yeah. Yet. Okay. Hold on. It's a work in progress. That looks good. Sorry. Here we go. Good way to build suspense. Yeah, I'm sure. I apologize. I had it right here. You see your Zoom screen. Yeah, it's your browser yes. screen. Need some pensive music. <laughs> Ta-da. I apologize. Yes, no worries. 
Okay, so let me pull this up a little bit. So this is the property. This is 199 Newtown Avenue. Uh, this is a rear lot uh, situated on the western side of Newtown Avenue. Uh, total property area is uh, 0.94 acres, of which uh, 0 0.07 acres approximately is this access way. So the area to be developed is a 0 0.875 acres. Uh, now, the property is bounded on the, or the developable area is bounded on the south side by a pond and wetland area, which is approximately uh, 0.3 acres. Um, so what the applicant is proposing to do is construct a single family dwelling, which is represented by the, the black outline or the brown outline. Uh, this will be located, uh, obviously, in the uh, center of the property, uh, outside of the um, outside of the uh, wetland setback. Um, there's also a 100 year flood line, which was uh, located on the original survey. It was outlined uh, on the FEMA flood maps as being zone A, which is represented by this dark dashed line, which runs right through this area. Um, the zone A on FEMA maps is an area which is, um, not been not had an actual flood elevation determined, so it's just an approximate area. Uh, so we uh, did a hydraulic analysis using the uh, HEC RES program, which is uh, Army Corps of Engineers Hydraulic Engineer Center River Analysis System program, which utilizing a known elevation of of flooding downstream, you can do backwater curves and and you can determine the uh, flood elevation of a point upstream. Uh, so we ran through that analysis and the uh, elevation of the flooding on this property was determined to be elevation 70.98, which is represented by this red line, which I'm scrolling over right now. Um, so our, our proposed building is going to be located outside of the flood zone. Uh, we have a, a zoning setback line <clears throat> right here. So the building is against is, the setback line on the north outside of the flood zone on the south. Uh, again, this is going to be a single family dwelling constructed on a crawl space, no full basement. Um, there is going to be very little um, earth moving activity proposed for the construction of the house, primarily excavating out for the crawl space, approximately 150 cubic yards. Uh, there'll be some material uh, which will be used to fill the driveway just to, to build the grade up a little bit. That was a figure at approximately 90 cubic yards. Uh, all the excess material would be removed from the site. Nothing will be deposited on site. Um, we, as part of the application, we went through and did a stormwater analysis uh, based on the city of Norwalk drainage manual uh, to determine the change in stormwater runoff versus the existing condition, which is uh, essentially a, a, a lawn area uh, down in this area uh, versus the driveway, building, patio, et cetera. And the increased runoff was uh, determined to be able to be uh, retained on site uh, utilizing underground 24 inch precast concrete galleys. Uh, we have one system on the Eastern side of the house uh, which will primarily take water from the driveway. Uh, one smaller system on the western side of the of the house, which will take water from the from the roof leaders. Um, and we did soil testing on the site just to determine or just to verify that the site would be conducive to providing on-site retention. Um, and this plan has been reviewed by the North Department of Public Works. The drainage report was reviewed, uh, and we did receive a sign off uh, from that department. Um, there are, as you can see, a number of existing large trees which surround the property. Um, those trees will remain. There are three proposed trees within the uh, bulk of the property which are to be removed, one here, one where the house is, and one right in this location. Um, and. We also have a planting plan, which I will uh, bring up uh, in a little bit, uh, which shows some uh, 
buffer plantings and replantings, which was prepared by um, Matthew Pop, a landscape architect with Environmental Land Solutions. Um, during construction, we are proposing uh, erosion controls to be siltation fencing along the uh, perimeter of the site uh, from the from this point, which is at the along the eastern border of the developed portion of the property. There'll be a double uh, sill fence and snow fence installed uh, to protect uh, the wetlands and, and water water uh, pond area. Uh, topsoil stockpile area here. Uh, and then up at the entrance, we do have an anti-tracking pad to prevent uh, siltation, mud, et cetera, from being tracked out onto Newtown Avenue. A uh, couple things that were brought up during the review. Uh, right here, there's a sort of like a, a wooden and gravel stone steps. Looked like, uh, you know, the owner was trying to create some type of an access right down to the water. Uh, that will be removed and replanted um, and that plantings are shown again, shown on the ELS plan. Uh, additionally, there's some material over here, look to be like leaves and maybe some debris that's been uh, deposited over the years that also will be removed and that area replanted. <clears throat> um, based on this plan, uh, our closest disturbance to the wetland is the um, patio, which is 19 feet. Uh, both of the erosion or both of the retention systems are about 32 feet from the wetland. Uh, the closest corner of the house is 31 feet from the wetland line. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? Can you just show me where the setback, the wetland setback line is? The 100 foot line? The 50 foot setback? It's right, right through here. It's kind of hard to see. I'm, I'm scrolling over it with my, my mouse right now. It goes right through the center of the house. Technically, upland review. Thank you. Not that bad. And it's a hundred foot from the water, which is that's the, that's the fifty foot site. setback, and then the hundred foot setback is is basically the entire property is within a yeah. hundred foot setback. Right. It's, it's a stark line and then up in here. Uh, okay, let me see if I can bring up the uh, planting plan. And I'll briefly review that. I think I lost it. Okay, so this is the plan prepared by uh, Environmental Land Solutions. Um, shows uh, <clears throat> uh, buffer plantings throughout the area along the wetlands, uh, some trees, shrubberies, et cetera, replanting of this area over on the Western side. Um, there's a total of 69, uh, plants, which includes trees, uh, I think seven trees, uh, shrubs and, and, and grant ground plantings, which are proposed to be uh, placed through this area. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Great, thank you. Uh, before we go to the public comments, commissioners, do you have any questions, Mr. Martin? Okay, hearing none, uh, Alexis or Amelia, who's shepherding our commenters? I can shepherd. I'll give Alexis a break. Um, so our first public comment will be Mr. Oh, actually, Alexis, I can't unless you can make me co-host. No, oh, okay. <laughs> you rascal. All right. Uh, the first will be um, 
Mr. Uh, Michael Butts. And so I've given you permission to speak and you should be able to unmute yourself. Mr. Butts, there he is. Hello, good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Butts. I live at 7 Stony Brook Road, Norwalk, Connecticut, and my property is directly behind this proposed site. Uh, I've got some basic questions, some comments. I thought, number one, that using a topography from 2011 seems to be a little bit ridiculous to me in this day and age, especially since this lot has had yard waste and debris piled in that corner for 13 years, decomposed leaves. I'm sure that the grade has changed. And the few little additions that this man made with his putting areas, it's not much, but it's still changed. So I wouldn't put a lot of faith in topography. The second is, I don't know how we went from slab on grade to crawl space. In the first Zoom meeting, it was slab on grade because of the floodplain. And now we're in a crawl space. Another comment is that I have a little bit of a problem with the topsoil being piled in the lowest point of the lot so that any time the rain comes down a hill, down the driveway, hits the topsoil pile and forces it, even though the silt fence is there, the silt fence doesn't always work. And when you ask me how I know that, I spent 46 years in the seat of a piece of heavy equipment. So I do have some knowledge of how these things are supposed to work and the actual working that they do. Another problem that I see is the driveway. And I see that we're somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 10% grade on that driveway. Now, I don't care what you make it out of, it's gonna be compacted and it's gonna be compressed. And when the water comes, when we have these heavy storms, the water's gonna come down there. It's gonna override those two basins and it's gonna wind up at the lowest point, which is right down where my property is. And you have no provision in this plan to contain the water. So I, I find that a problem. I also find it a problem that when these rains do come, that these catch basins will be overflowed, especially down here, the one at the south end of the property that's supposed to catch the rainwater from the roof. Okay, when you flood when you flood that area, that supposed percolation that's supposed to take place isn't going to take place. Mr. Martin just said that the floodplain showed that the elevation for flooding was contained at seven elevation 70. Alexis has a picture that I gave her, and the spot elevation on this print is 73.4, was completely underwater. 75 foot of my backyard was from that brook, 75 feet out, was underwater. And it's not just once, it's several times. So I don't know how the, the, the software works for figuring out where the flood is, but Alexis has a picture of the floodplain and it certainly is an elevation 70. Another, another thing that I thought of when I looked at this, there should have been on this print an earth berm along that rubble wall, somewhere around a foot and a half to two foot high to contain that water on that site. And it should have been planted with plants of their choice, but it still should have been an earth berm that keeps that water on that property and not coming into my property. Um, they have the extra fill, it wouldn't be hard to do, but still, it's something that I thought should be done. The other thing is, when you look at this lot between the area of Newtown Avenue and the first, first 
three houses on Stony Brook Road, all those backyards come down to this corner. When you get a heavy rain, there's nothing to stop that water from coming down. And when you get anywhere 6 8% grade in heavy rain, most of that water does not go in the catch basins. It goes around it. The sides of the driveway are lower than the driveway. So the natural instinct for the water is going to be come down a hill. And where does it wind up? It winds up in my backyard. And it doesn't seem like there was really a lot of um, consideration for someone who I paid taxes on his property for 45 years. And I think there should have been a little bit of consideration paid to how we let the water that comes from this site wind up in my backyard. And I don't think it was addressed at all because I don't believe that the, the yard drain or the catch basin that's at the end of the driveway could possibly handle that three foot of water that overruns the brook comes in my backyard and will wind up there. And other than that, I would basically conclude my remarks for the moment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Butts. I think um, we'll we'll take all the public comments, then give the applicant a chance to respond to them. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Osaka Klein. Okay. Hello, this is Oksana. Sorry, thank you. That's okay. Um, we are five Stony Brook Road. Um, and our main questions are more so if this is approved, we would like to understand the construction timeline. Um, it's important for us because the construction would be happening directly in front of our home. Um as well as Michael Butts's home. Uh, but we were looking to understand when would this break ground, uh, timeline, how long would this take um, in terms of noise and dust, what we can expect in that. I mean, we have small children, so we just wanna understand um, the impact of the construction and the timeline. So that is for five Stony Brook Road. Uh, but we also have, we're also concerned about the flooding as well, obviously, because, um, you know, Michael is our neighbor as well, and, and we don't want this to cause flooding into his area. Um, but we also have three Stony Brook here as well. So they're we're on the same Zoom. So I don't know if they're able to make their comments public at, at this time as well. Um, okay. Yeah, they, they can just uh, be clear to announce themselves and, uh, and state their name and um, address. Yeah, um, my name is Carlos Costa, and we're on Three Stony Brook Road. Um, my concern is um, something that I actually, Michael talking about all the drainage issues and stuff. I just realized I have a drainage issue on my property as well. Um, our driveway sits, uh, I would say roughly probably four feet below street level. And uh, we have a catch basin on, on the edge of our driveway that captures all the rainwater that comes down, obviously, plus some extra that runs off from the road. And uh, I was told by the previous owner that that drain is connected all the way through my property and into the pond. That's how where that water goes. My concern is during construction, if they break this pipe, um, will I end up getting flooded in my driveway? And of course, my garage level is right there at the same, you know, same level practically. Um, will the water end up inside my house? Um, that's just, uh, that's basically the only concern I have this moment that I'm worried about. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Alexis, do we have anyone up? And, anyone else? Um, up? If anyone else in the um, 
any attendees, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand. Mm. Mr. Butts has his hand raised. It may be that he his spouse wants to speak. Can I allow him to talk no to part. Jack? <laughs> Okay. Um, for the butts, your hands was where is still raised. If you, if somebody else would like to speak, they can announce themselves yeah, and speak. And if hand. it's if it's Mr. Butts, <laughs> you lower your hand. Okay. 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 We'll just ignore it. Okay. Let's... Got it. Okay. Okay. So is that all the public? Who wants to comment? I think so. Last call. If you want to um, speak, you can either use the raise your hand uh, feature in Zoom. Don't see any takers. Okay. Um, Mr. Martin, before you respond, which I assume you would like to do, I think I um, want to sort out what we heard. Um, and uh, other commissioners or Alexis, correct me if you heard something different than how I'm summarizing it, but from Mr. Butts, um, he made a comment about the crawl space versus originally had been sub on grade. As far as I think we are concerned, it doesn't so much matter to us as long as there's not a whole bunch of extra dirt getting put somewhere we don't want it, but um, it doesn't really affect site hydrology. It doesn't affect anything else. So that's sort of irrelevant to us, at least. It may be something that zoning um, would care about. Uh, but otherwise, most of uh, Ms. Bud's comments were uh, referring to surface water management. Um, and sounds like uh, my impression was that there's a whole lot else going on that maybe was not um, either considered or um, we didn't know about. Um, and again, we're just taking Mr. Butts on his word. Um, Ms. Klein, um, your your comments about schedule, noise, traffic, and whatnot are also more of a zoning thing, not really a, a wetlands or conservation commission thing. Um, but thank you for that. And I again, and Lexis, jump in if. Yeah, I was just going to say um, when once it gets back to the to the applicant, you can certainly talk about his um, the proposed um, construction uh, sequence and and timeline. But okay. the um, there's nothing that compels them to do it within um, a certain um, time. A wetland permit is uh, valid for 10 years. And so once they get the permit, they don't have to immediately, they can start immediately, more or less, but they don't, um, they don't have to, and we can't compel them to, to um, kind of start within a certain time period. And uh, neither can zoning. Oh, okay, good to know. Um, okay, and then Mr. Costa, Costa um, also had concern about um, some sort of drainage, which I didn't entirely follow, but there seems to be a, a subterranean pipe that he's concerned about um, this project affecting. So did anybody, did I miss anything or did I mischaracterize anything as far as commissioners are concerned? Or Alexis or Amelia or anybody? There was a, com there was a comment about the age of the maps that were presented being, I guess, 2011. So. Okay. Yeah, also, yeah, from Mr. Butts. Okay. Also about uh, flooding and surface water. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Martin, would you like to tackle any of uh, these things that were issues that were brought up? Uh, you're muted, Dean. I apologize. Uh, yes, we have uh, contacted the sur surveyor who did the original survey to get an updated, you know, topographic and, and boundary survey. He's just so backed up. The, the latest time frame that I had was he would be able to get out here on the 17th um, to do an assessment and, and uh, um, field work. Uh, and then it was going to take him probably a week after that, maybe to come up with a final plan. Um, so we have, we are trying to get that done. It's just a slow process. Um, yeah, as, as far as the, you know, I think I might've missed, misspoke about the, the crawl space. Um, when I was going through my spiel earlier, um, it was going to be a slab on grade. That was the original, um, 
construction proposal that hasn't changed. Um, you know, the topsoil location, um, we just tried to put it someplace where it wasn't going to be moved. We can always, uh, I guess we could relocate that to a further place, uh, maybe in the northeastern corner of the site. Um, but again, it's going to be, uh, you know, silt fence around it and protected. Uh, but that's certainly not, you know, uh, an issue. We can always relocate that. Um, and, you know, the, the hydraulic analysis that was done, that was just based on the best information we have. Uh, obviously, there's been some heavy storms in the last few years. Um, and it doesn't surprise me that, uh, you know, that there's a lot of water that's coming down through this area. Um, we, you know, obviously, this is the low point of the neighborhood. Uh, a lot of the houses on Stony Brook, the house on 197, everything's above this property and uh, Mr. Butt's property. Um, you know, we can't collect everybody's water and keep it on our property. Uh, you know, that's not what the city requires. We're just trying to maintain uh, a zero increase in runoff um, for our for our property, what we're doing, uh, what we're proposing to do to not add water uh, to the neighboring properties. Um, you know, I'm not sure about, you know, constructing an earth berm. Uh, that's something that, you know, we could possibly look at, you know, talk to the Talk to the uh, Alexis about, you know, if that's something that, you know, that you would like us to do. We could certainly do that. I know uh, one of the comments that uh, came out of the site walk was that some of the material on that western side of the property uh, should be removed. Um, Why is that? What's um, that? I'm sorry. I didn't quite get that. Oh, um, one of the one of the comments from the site walk, as I understood it, was there was some material along the western side of the property, which uh, was uh, deemed as fill, and that was to be removed. We had to show that to be removed off our plan. Um, right. So just to clarify, Norwalk doesn't do uh, the commission doesn't do site walks. That was uh, just a staff comment from from Miss Williams. Oh, okay. Upon and so um, again, that's kind of the. I don't have a pointer, but um, the uh, westernmost end of the uh, the property where you see some trees on the plan yeah. here. Yeah, right, right. through here. There, there is a, a, a pretty good accumulation of uh, deposited landscaping debris. Oh, remove existing landscape brush pile. Right. That's it. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Um. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I don't have a construction timeline as of yet. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, the builder wants to start working as soon as he's able to, but I don't have an exact timeline determined. Uh, uh, as far as the uh, existing drain pipe coming from the driveway at number three, Stony Brook, I mean, if there's a pipe that's coming down through here um and we hit it during construction I, I think we should notate that and certainly we don't want to block off you know an existing drain and cause problems on our neighboring property so uh that would be you know notation maybe that we add to the plan um to uh be aware of and make sure that it doesn't get disturbed um and and again we're you know we're, we're like i said before you know you know, we're trying to create the 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 best solution for this property. Um, obviously, we're not trying to hurt other properties. We're not trying to add water, create flooding on other properties. Um, but we, it, it, you know, again, we can't collect all the water from all the neighboring properties and keep it on our property. You know, right now, water goes through from neighboring properties through this property. Um, it's going to continue to do that. All we're all we're uh, trying to do is just. Uh, make sure that we don't increase the runoff. Dean, about that driveway, I mean, um, it's a good point that, you know, uh, that's a big old luge run of hard and permeable surface that water is going to collect on and, you know, maybe gain volume and velocity or whatever. Is there anything instead of, is there anything we can do to tilt it one way or another to to push water so it stays on the pavement as is short of time as possible and then doesn't accumulate and become a big well we could I mean? uh we could curb the driveway or we could put a trench drain across the entire driveway so that uh you know like a, a 12 inch wide trench drain as opposed to 
you know, two small catch base on the other side. That way you're you're collecting 100 percent of the water coming down through. Well, I was thinking of something, I mean, because we all know that trench trains get clogged. There's ice and snow and, you know, all kinds of crazy things that happen. Is there any any more sort of natural way to manage the water potentially? You know, like. Yeah, we could we could create, you know, swales um, on either side. We could do something like that. We could potentially create some. Uh, I, I I would say water bars, but it's going to be a you know it's not going to be a driveway that's going to have a water bar. I don't through. know what that is. Um, like when you're hiking and there's a bar that uh, goes uh, perpendicular. Yeah, it's to just the, a the trail. just a like a, a ditch that runs you know crossways across the driveway. Okay. Just to slow water down. Okay. Well, I mean, we do have like how many feet is it from the end of the driveway to the property line that is just straight up lawn? I mean, that's several. Yeah, that's quite a ways. Feet, so, right. And is that, and I'm going to ask one more question, then I'm going to shut up. That wall to the north, on the north property line, is the grade on the north side of that wall higher or lower than the grade on, on this property on this side of the wall? Well, I mean, it, I don't, it looks to be pretty similar. Uh, we, 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 um, looks to be a little bit higher as you get down closer in the flat area down where the house development site is. Higher on which side? Uh, on this property side or the neighbor's? No, side? on the other property. You can see this grade is going this way. The grades uh, are going this way, which means the grade is going up as you're going off the property. Okay. So everything's sloping towards us. Okay. So really, if we're concerned about water going to the property to the west, it's from the bottom of that wall, between the bottom of that wall and the and the pond. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. It'd be over in this area. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm done. Do any other commissioners have questions or comments or thoughts? Um, I just want to note that I, I did just email all of you. There was a written comment from Mr. Butts that had been received back in September, um, but that was before you had scheduled a public hearing, so I didn't send it to you. And he made note of the uh, a photograph that he had um, sent me. So I just sent that along to um, the commissioners and to uh, you, Mr. Martin. Well, that's a really good point. So, all right, I guess I'm not done talking. So like from our very specific viewpoint, which is, you know, upholding state statutes regarding inland wetlands and bodies of water. Mm -hmm. um, how do we feel about this house flooding? You know, like, are we concerned that, you know, nasty stuff from the house gets washed into the natural body of water? Are we concerned about there being you know, more work happening to repair a house that's been flooded out to worry about, the, you know, the house, it's not going to wash away entirely, I would expect. Yeah, no, I think that you're, you're um, you'd be more, as the Inland Wetland Agency, um, as far as um, flooding, well, there, there's two things. One is that they're um, you're the first regulatory agency to review this. And so one of the reasons that staff had asked for an updated um, survey, including an updated topo, and that the applicant do the the HECRAS study was to understand the um, the ramifications of other regulations like the zoning regulations that includes the flood hazard um, regulations to make sure that what you're you're approving um, or what you're considering not approving is um, you know is going to meet those regulatory schemes. And then as the Inland Wetland Agency, you're you're not, um, I mean, you're concerned, but you're not regulating the impacts to a potential homeowner or, or the, the potential future home, just the impact to the wetland and water course. So when you're looking at um, wetland and water course impacts, there's, there's the, the Water course itself, and then there's the area that that contributes to the to the water course, and that's why you have your your upland review area. And so, if the house were to, and I'm not saying it is, but if the house were to, um, 
reduce the somehow reduce or not the house but the design were to reduce the capacity of the wetland and water course to act as um flood buffers um then then i think you you do look at 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 flooding but not not the impacts to the house it's more so impact to the flood plain so if we were building a wall that would constrict where the water would naturally want to expand and move that is one thing, but in this case, the water is just going to come up and it's going to ruin somebody's house, but it really doesn't, you know, affect anyone else down the line as far as like making it worse or, you know, constricting how the water can move. Is that a decent? Um, well, not, I, I can't say that because I'm not, not an engineer that did, did, a, did a flood study, but you're, um, right, that's not your, um, that is not your purview. That is the the flood zone regulations, which only tie back to the um, FEMA defined floodplain. So the FEMA defines areas that are of higher risk. It doesn't mean that other areas don't flood. Um, uh, there are definitely other areas outside of the high hazard flood areas that that flood. Okay, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so then I, so I, I'm seeing one, one big thing, which is like uh, Commissioner Pence pointed out that um, we really should make sure everybody's on the same page with the survey, right? That seems to be sort of an out, outlying loose end or not, or. Yeah, you know? I mean, you're, well, your, your regulations, um, in your regulation, it defines what, a, what an application typically needs. Um, and that was one of the comments um, upon the initial review of the application was that the the uh, base mapping, well, the, the original site plan didn't reference the origin of the base map. And uh, we recommended that um, in addition to just the site plan that there should be submitted with the application a survey um, that's been updated. Um, and that is part of, part of your applications uh, requirements. Um, obviously, you can think back to other applications that you've seen. You don't always stick to that requirement of, of a survey because um, a lot of the wetland determinations that you're making are much more kind of qualitative that aren't necessarily captured by the, you know, the the um, specific accuracy that a that a survey requires. But you can require it. So that that is up to you. And that would look like us perhaps keeping the public hearing open until December 5th. When's our next meeting? December 5th? No, it's uh, the 28th. Oh, we have oh, November. That's right. 28th of November. Yes. Okay. And so, and that would give the um, applicant another opportunity to um, hopefully get that squared away. And yeah, so any, anything that you're Anything that you, you know, if you're serious about the driveway and, and the potential for swales or trenches or anything like that, and if you wanted to see those bef before, you'd want to hold the public hearing open for that. But yes, that's what you would need to do. Ms. Knight? Yeah, I mean, I just have a question thinking about, you know, the upland review area and the buffer and the location of the patio and just more creation of lawn um, in light of some of the information from neighboring properties about the flooding and what their experience has been. It's a little bit um, concerning or not necessarily preferential to see a patio. I don't know what the surface, if, how permeable that is and just having the lawn because that's not much of a buffer in terms of helping flood mitigation and for the water course and the wetland. Because the lawn pretty much, you know, there's long access now to the pond. So I'm not quite sure, you know, what really is the buffer here? Good question. Well, so we, well, again, it's not a buffer necessarily. It's an upland review area. But so, so we're saying that the surface water that lands on the roof is being addressed by the subterranean 
infiltration system to the west. Um, the driveway, et cetera, at least from elevation 76 and up, is theoretically being addressed by the um, subterranean drainage system, infiltration system to the east of the house. But we really haven't addressed the water on the what hits that patio and or the water that hits it or the water that comes up to it and can't infiltrate there if it's an impermeable surface. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and also just, you know, a lot, of, it's a lot of lawn area. I see. The upland review area where typically we're not encouraging lawning activities in the review area. We're trying to propose um, more buffer. Mr. Martin, can you tell us how, so I see the, the new bolt or demarcation barrier. Um, can you give us a few dimensions as to how deep that is uh, from, or how far off that is from the wetland line? I can't hear, I, I can't see you or hear you actually. I think he's uh, measuring. Oh, he's thinking, good. So yeah, it's a good thing to do for It's about 15 feet. It's about 15 feet around the back of the house from the wetland line to the boulder demarcation line. Okay. Catherine, does that make you a little squeamish? Like maybe it's a bit too tight? I know we've discussed it previously. I mean, it seems, a, it seems a bit tight relative to other applications that we have coming in and what, you know, we've been looking at in terms of activities within the Upland Review area. I mean, this is very aggressive. Noted. Yeah. Dean, do you think the property owner has an appetite for reconsidering the depth of that buffer? I, I certainly can can um, run it by, run it by him, see okay. what he says. Okay. And then I guess um, maybe something uh, about the patio as to if it can be impermeable, perhaps. I'm sorry, it could be permeable, like permeable papers or gravel or something. Yeah. Again, the the as far as the 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 roof, the patio, the driveway, all the impervious areas were addressed in the drainage analysis. Okay. Um, and, you know, just because there there is an impervious area which isn't being collected doesn't mean that's going to um, add runoff from the property. You know, the collection of the driveway and the um, roof area uh, is enough to offset, you know, the the you know the area of the patio even if it's if it's if a, a an impervious surface so that there's less runoff going off from the property. Um, that being said, uh, I certainly can see if he would be willing to make that a previous material. Okay. Well, and, and while you mentioned the driveway, so where does the water go from elevation seventy six down? Again, it's surface runoff. It just um, goes off into the lawn. Yes. All right. And uh, Chairman, I just want to um, let you know that uh, two of the atten attendees have their hands raised. I know oh. you com completed the, they're the same, the same oh. as have spoken before. Oh. I just wanted to alert you. Well, what happens in, what happens in when we, so let's say that, you know, we've heard some things tonight that may give us pause. I don't want to speak for anyone else, but theoretically. Um, uh, if we keep the public hearing open until our next meeting in two weeks to give the applicant an opportunity to make some updates, does the public get to have another comment? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong procedure wise, but I think we, we set our piece tonight. Um, and then there will be another opportunity, assuming that if, someone moves and it's approved by the commission to keep the public hearing open, um, then the public will have another opportunity to comment. You don't need a motion for that, I don't think. Okay. It's just uh, To keep the public hearing open? Yep. Okay. Anybody have thoughts on that? Yay, nay? Good idea, bad idea? 
tired and hungry? Good idea. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Okay. Great. Okay, so just to clarify, the public hearing would be continued to the next regularly scheduled meeting, which is November 28th, and it would resume at 7 p.m. that evening during the regular meeting. Great. Okay. And we're Any clear other? on what is in the purview of this commission versus planning and zoning or not anywhere else that we would be like answered. Yeah. So again, you're you're focused on what are the impacts to the to the wetland and 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 water course, right. both short term during during construction and then long term with the development of the yep. the, um, the property. But a, sure. it it is a building lot, so a something can be built there. Right. Okay. Anybody else, um, commissioners or staff? Questions or comments? So we're not closing the public hearing, it's staying open, but we are going to move forward with the agenda of our meeting and we'll thank Mr. Martin for his time and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you know how to find Alexis if you want to bounce anything off of her um, in the meantime. Yes, we'll do. All right, thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. All right, so we're going to skip ahead to approval of minutes. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? All motion to approve minutes from what was that? October 24th. October 1st. Eight, wait, oh, I'm in the wrong month. I always do this with my calendar. 24th, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Cheryl, was that a? I I wasn't there, so. Oh. I'll abstain. You're gonna abstain. Okay, so it's four yay, no against, and one abstention. Is that fair? Okay. No, no against. Who's against? No against. No against. No okay. against. <laughs> four zero oh, and one. Okay. Uh, annual meeting schedule. Ooh. Ooh, and I, I just realized I don't think that I attached this to the email packet. Um, so I can either share my screen, <clears throat> excuse me, share my screen, or we can um, punt this to the next meeting and I can send it out to all of you. Share it, uh, well, <clears throat> I don't know. I say share it, but other people, you want a chance to be able to compare calendars? I would agree. Uh, just share your screen. We can always ask you to send it for our next meeting. All right. <clears throat> here, here it is. Um, so again, it keeps the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. Um, and so all these are pretty normal, I think. Um, once again, we don't really hit any major holidays. Well, let me double check Thanksgiving. Oh, I think I checked through September and I moved on to other things. So let me just make sure that next. Well, it's never on a Tuesday. Never on a Tuesday, that's true. <laughs> Okay, so that is, um, that would be Thanksgiving week, that week, uh, November 26th. So often you, you um, so in the past, this year, Thanksgiving fell in between your two meetings. It fell on the third Thursday. Um, next year, it will be on the fourth Thursday. So you often, in the past, you have not held a meeting that week, but that is, up to you. I mean, school, like kids are in school, right? Up until Thursday, Thanksgiving? No, early dismissal I see on my calendar for this this year on Wednesday. I don't know. I say if you're taking off on Tuesday, that's your own prerogative before Thanksgiving. We should just have the meeting. We're not European. Our holidays do seem to be ever expanding. Not that yeah. I'm complaining. Totally. 
<laughs> it's like can't do it that month. It's uh Thanksgiving yeah. that month. Anybody else? Oh. Reference. Looks fine to me. Okay. Looks good. All right. So do we have to move to approve this or just say thanks a lot, Alexis? Uh oh, we'll we'll take a motion. Okay. So moved. Uh I'll second yeah, it. American uh, psycho. Who is that? Um, who seconded? Catherine second? Uh, I did. Or I was the one who said something. <laughs> Who's not on mute? Cheryl American got it. Psycho. That's all okay. I heard, which was an excellent interjection into this. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Lexus. Uh, <laughs> conservation initiatives. So yeah, I, I joined um, a special closed meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board Commission. Commission. It wasn't a closed meeting. They're we all open. <laughs> not closed meeting. Sorry, not closed meeting. Uh, but it like the public was not allowed to say anything. If that makes sense. Right. So there was a public meeting, but not a public hearing. Ah, there we go. You were the special guest. Special guest, yeah. Uh, anyway, to well, thank you for doing that, Steve. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they're... thank you they're... for representing us and, and being present as part of that process. Quite welcome, and they were really great, and they're totally <laughs> into all the sustainability stuff. Sorry, Alexis. I was just gonna say they're not as great as you guys. Just. Oh. just... I don't know. They, I, mean, I think they have a harder task than we do, honestly. Oh, much harder. It's horrible being a planning and zoning commissioner. Yeah. Conservation okay. is the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So good job. Pat on the back for everybody on this commission. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, they're all in and had uh, great feedback. And I told them that we appreciate their uh, consideration of our input and just their effort and uh, willingness to um, take this on. Um, so yeah. And just by the way, we are also, um, we did talk about, I don't know if you recall, um, I was, I table, uh, not table, but I proposed the idea of, of requiring, um, you know, a green certification, um, which we decided we couldn't require, but they are deciding to include in how does it work, Alexis? Special zones, right? They, they are they required to do in special zones, or it gets them something. It gets the developer more space or whatever. Right, it's incentives in some of the uh, the village districts. In the village districts, right? And so we we that's not nailed down yet, but um, you know that's going to be in there as a way to incentivize developers to do a uh, third party certification by rewarding them with stuff they want. Right. So that's in the cards. And um, I, uh, Nick Cantor and I from P&Z Commission, I think he's the vice chair. Um, he's the one, he's pretty aggressive with the um, sustainability stuff. And we were talking about how silly it is that um, New York has a stretch energy code. Uh, Massachusetts has a stretch energy code. And for whatever reason, Connecticut doesn't. And the reason is that it hasn't been legislated. Um, mm -hmm. And so we met last week to put together some thoughts about how we would, you know, go about to make that push. Um, the legislative legislative session starts in February, and so we've got a goal to. I've got to do some research on how New York and Massachusetts made. And by the way, Stretch Energy Code is just basically saying like, here's Connecticut's energy code. And whoever wants to opt into a more aggressive code is allowed to do so. They're not, you can't do it unless the state says you can do it or anything more, more rigorous than the, what's adopted by the state currently. But, hey, Steve, if they were, if they were able to put, uh, you said in the special districts. They're not I requiring it. They're giving it as an option. They're why special it. districts? <clears throat> oh, just because wherever they want density i guess i mean yeah i don't know why just there why not the whole oh, city that... i don't know yeah okay i didn't think it was an option for them to do that but if it was i 
Yeah. Uh, Steve Kleppen thinks it works with okay. the way the language is now. There is language, I don't know where it is, Lexis can probably tell us, we don't, you know, um, that says that um, jurisdictions, it would be good if they were more aggressive with sustainability, but it, it there's some conflicting language elsewhere that, I don't know, there's not a lot of teeth to it. I'm not really not saying anything useful right now. No. Lexis, just... help, help. Yeah, so right, right, <laughs> right now the zoning, the zoning code. Uh, there's case law that says that the zoning code can't be more restrict, more uh, require greater energy uh, efficiency, basically, than the state health code. But it, that the way that uh, Norwalk is doing it is it has components where it is not requiring it, but it's incentivizing it. So it can be part of the zoning code because it's it's an option for uh, developers in certain areas where the city is comfortable giving um, something in return for that. Yeah, I, all I, my only comment to that would be why, why I don't even know. There is. Because yeah. they don't want to give the uh, carrot in, to other places necessarily. It doesn't, doesn't. Um, the hoop um, exactly. Yeah. It's around train stations and, you know, it's promoting. Yeah walkable city density, et cetera. I mean, I'll, I'm not going to turn it down. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, the we're, we're, we're trying to, in you know, our infinite free time to put something together to have some representative present and, to, you know, whatever. Uh, so that's that. I'm sorry, I totally... Um, that would be excellent. So happy to um, yeah. be a editor or something to help be another set of eyes before you submit or, you know, because I will say, though, that stuff does happen. I mean, I wrote a letter a while ago about Title IX to Bob Duff, and then he wound up putting a bill mm -hmm. together. So, I mean, it does happen. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the plan is to put together a, like a cell sheet is what I would call it, just like a very simple explanation of what we want to do and how to do it. Um, get uh, experts and whatnot to, you know, contribute to that. Um, get other shareholders. So, you know, um, anybody who wants to sort of like get on board with it and put their name on it to say, you know, we support this. Um, and uh, And yeah, so... We'll let, we'll, I'll keep you in the loop. Hopefully something happens. We'll see. Um, okay. Uh, with election season. Huh? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Ignore me. Comments of staff? Um, I just wanted to note that the... Well, uh, actually, Lex, it's not. I actually wanted to hear from Amelia. Sorry. I'm no, just kidding. All right. Go just ahead, kidding. No, Just kidding. Go. Just go. No, I'm not going to go. Fine. Yeah. Uh, citywide um, coastal flood resiliency plan um, is uh, nearing uh, kickoff of a draft RFP, and I'll be reaching out to a steering committee. The steering committee I identified in the um, grant application was more or less the same group of people that were the steering committee for the um, Resilient Sono project that uh, Yukon's Circa has headed up. So, unless um, and Miss Knight represented the Conservation Commission then. So, unless you you uh, are not interested, <laughs> Catherine, in being on the the citywide um, flood resiliency plan steering committee, uh, let me know, <laughs> and the commission can find someone else. But we're kind of sticking with that core group, but then adding other other people. And if anyone Happy knows, continue any unless somebody else. Okay. Thank you, and Catherine. Does, does anyone, if anyone knows a member of the public that's not on a commission that is um, um, interested in serving on the steering committee, um, you can send me their names too. Um, Riverine, anyone that you know that's been impacted by Riverine flooding? would be ideal. They can be property owners, they can be renters. They can be... 
any anything around. So let me know if you know anyone. Okay. And then yeah. I know that um Matt, you had a asked a question about the open space fund and um the capital budget process. Yeah, I, I just I know there's an annual process where you I would imagine you put in a request for funding. Is that correct? Um so the since um forever the request has actually come through the rec and parks department which is a division of of public works um but uh so i don't put in a request directly because for, for whatever reason it's been um really don't it turned out yeah was it Oh, okay. We lost you for a second, Alexis. Frozen. There we go. Okay. <laughs> My computer is making whirling noises. Sorry. Um, so I can check with Rec and, and Parks to confirm that they will be doing their um, normal annual ask. I suspect that they are going to again be asking for just 50000 Who? Who? Um, I mean, who? I, I guess... Forgetting who does the ask, who should be, I guess, pushing that process and, and doing some analysis around what should be requested? Um, I mean, I don't, mm, that could be the Conservation Commission. All right, I mean, um, without making it too complicated, I mean, my, my feelings are last year we got nothing, right? Um, no, last year I think you got 50,000. We got 50,000? I believe so. I thought it got pulled out. All right. Well. Um, I I can I I can confirm and email you. Um, and I don't know how the other commissioners feel. Um, I mean, if we got fifty thousand last year, that's great. If, if we ask for another fifty thousand, that's good. I mean, the cost of everything goes up. We're talking about land and open space, and um, I know that we did. I can't remember the number. I I, I think people were happy with. Um, the decision to help the land trust to preserve those that space. Um, I'm not going to cite it properly, but you know what I'm talking about. So I, I just think for us, it's important to have a healthy fund balance, and I, I don't think we should be shy in what we ask for. Go for it, man. So I mean, I'm definitely interested in it. I don't know much about it, but I'm I'm interested in. I would have to learn I can help though. So. And I, I will confirm it was funded with fifty thousand last uh fiscal year. It was. Okay. And do you know offhand roughly like what came out of the fund to help the land trust this year? Um, I believe it was two hundred thousand, but yeah, that, that's I, I thought it was roughly somewhere between two and three. So you're probably both. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was an uh, even two thousand. How much is in there now? You know, can I maybe um, say? Can we it, about two hundred? So it was three hundred and seventy-one, but that didn't include the fifty thousand. So you got, you got, um, or twenty minus two hundred, right? Twenty. So two twenty so about. Uh, I can. I cannot access this uh, currently without crashing, but I can get that number from the controller's office. But um, but yeah, so it's definitely a little, um, you know, a, a little low for matching funds at this point. When does the ask need to happen or typically happen? It's happening in the next um, few weeks. So okay, Matt, are you thinking we ask like, for 100 this year or 150 or sorry, Alexis, you said when? Yeah, I mean you can add, you can certainly make a suggestion and um and encourage the uh Rec and Parks Commission to ask for more. Um I can also um so that's for this year. Little budget calendar, just looking at the capital budget calendar. Yeah, so next next week, 
um, between the 20th and the 8th. It's uh, staggered entry, so we're definitely. <laughs> you guys can call me crazy, but why don't we ask for 250000 Why don't we try and get the fund back to where it was, put the ball in their court? I mean, I know when the, the when that vote for the land trust went to the Common Council, there was so, so much excitement about open space. Um, and, uh, you know, I know that there's some sentiment in the city that the whole thing with Manresa, and I'm sure those numbers are just way out of proportion, but the fact that the city couldn't purchase any of that, I mean, more should be done, just in my opinion. I, I don't know what the balances are in neighboring towns, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you can do with 220,000. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what the future of open space, maybe that's more of a land trust thing, and I know they have plenty of open space preserved, but um i just think it would be great if there's more money in there and i think i think us helping the land trust is is a good story so we should position ourselves to do that in the future so i don't know you guys can call me crazy i'd ask for 250 and would see what happens i would i would agree with the 250 i mean if you look at statistics i don't even know where it is now but you know the open space has declined in norwalk and there's more developed space and it's going backwards relative to the state of Connecticut's aspirations to have 20% open space. Um, you know, Norwalk, I think, is hovering closer to like 15 or 14% and going, it's gone down. Um, so it's lost a lot of like, and, you know, looking at some of the applications for the subdivisions, I mean, those are open spaces now that are being developed and we're kind of encroaching more and more into wetland areas because they're deemed building lots, you know, so. Cool. Got my support. So um, do you want to uh, make a motion to authorize your staff, Amelia, no, <laughs> to um, <laughs> write a, um, a, a memo on your behalf to the um, um, director of Rec and Parks uh, at this point to ask that their their initial ask be bumped up, and then um, then I would recommend seeing how that goes, and then you would write a second memo when um maybe to the planning and zoning commission so the the process for capital budget is that um although i think pnz has gotten away from the the minutia um discussion that they used to have they review it to confirm that all the asks have to relate to um a specific goal in the plan of conservation and development the 10-year plan um, all capital capital expenses have to link to that plan because that's kind of the whole idea is that you have a plan and then you you um, you budget and you implement all of these city asks um, based on the goals and priorities of that plan. Um, so it it first there's first the request from the department to the finance office, um, then the planning and zoning commission reviews the requests for consistency with the plan of conservation and development. And then they send that on to the, the finance um, office. And then the uh, board of uh, estimate and taxation reviews those. And then they have um, an additional public hearing on, um, on items. So I guess I would recommend that you first start with um, asking the designated asker to um, ask for more. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think, I know the plan of conservation of development is a huge document. Um, I'm gonna go back, I've scanned this years ago. I wonder what it says in there about the open space fund, but it makes sense, right? If you're supposed to follow that plan, hopefully there's something in there. It, it, we're gonna have to justify this ask many times. So yeah, um, that would be my you know, thoughts. So it sounds like you're, so I'd write your, your, I think you're asking me to write a memo for the commission, uh, Steve is the chair, to the um, director of uh, recreation and parks to in, 
um, encourage him in preparation of his capital budget requests, because they have a lot of capital budget requests, um, that they um, bump up their annual request for the open space fund to 250000 yeah, I'm going to defer to Steve. That's pretty much what we're saying. I would offer to write it myself. I just don't want to overpromise. Like, um, yeah, but, no, that's fine. Okay. But one thing I can do is read this thing, find out what it says about the fund, because I just want to make sure it's in line so we know what we're talking about, right? Um, yeah. So from the, the it, it definitely yeah it it pretty much says that the city um, should value open space and that it it should. Um, maintain an open space fund. I mean, it doesn't really have, um, oh, looks like part three. Do you want it, Cheryl? I was just Googling. I, I, I just pulled up the document real quick and did a quick search, but part three seemed, I, I, I haven't read it myself, um, but uh, it would be interesting to know what it says in there. Um, so does that make sense as far as kind of your first step, I think? Yeah, I, I'm I'm just listening here. I I agree. Uh, the only thing that and I don't even mean to overcomplicate this, but why again do we ask for money through parks and rec? Um, I think it's been like that forever. Um, so generally the conservation office um, does, we don't like buy a lot of things, right? We don't have a lot of capital um, budget expenses and neither really does, does planning and zoning. Every once in a while we do a large plan like the POCD and um, then ask for, for uh, capital funds. Um, whereas recreation and parks are, um, asking for, um, you know, money to do, redo the um, athletic fields, to do the uh, basketball and tennis courts, to uh, repair the garage um, and maintenance shed, uh, renovations to Cranberry Park, to Oyster Shell Park, to the skate, to the scoreboards, you know, to, they've got a lot of these capital expenses that they are going through the capital budget process every year anyway. And in the past, there was a document called the Master Plan of Parks and Open Space. Um, mm -hmm. That was a catalog of all parks and it included open space. Mm -hmm. Recreation and parks, uh, more recently, had they we actually, the city just did a new uh, master plan of parks, it's now just called parks. Before it was, really focused on kind of cataloging. And so it was in, I think Rec wanted to include parks and open space because it included all that space as our, as kind of a count. Mm -hmm. um, and the newest plan is, has much more kind of a programmatic slant of looking at, well, what, what is recreation and parks, you know, offering uh, mm -hmm. program wise. So I think, I think that that's just how it, um, it developed when the open space fund um, was initiated in the year 2000. I wasn't here. And I think that the um, administration at the time determined that my predecessor was probably not the best person to house it with. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. So it sounds like it. there's a couple of reasons to just stay with the status quo. So never mind. Just asking. Matt, do you find anything exciting? Is there basically I'm I'm all for everything that's been discussed. Uh and uh anybody who is willing to assist Alexis and Amelia with the letter, et cetera, um, I'm sure that'd be appreciated. Yeah, I didn't find anything. I was wrestling with my computer here, a little problem. Um, but I I'm gonna read that document. Alexis, I, I support what you're saying. I think it makes sense, even if the POCD is kind of a broad, you know language and there's no numerical goal or anything i just think it's important that we you know establish a healthy fund right and so yep. haven't done any real actual aerial data but we know what land costs around here and the current balance is just not doesn't just does not seem healthy so yeah we should at least replenish and the, the other thing that's concerning to me is and I, you guys have that great document that, that shows the history i remember seeing it years ago 
no increases, right? 50,000 every year, right? I mean, oh, at some, right. At some right. point, you know, it's up the ante here. So anyway, everything else costs more. I think there should be like eight to 10 million in that fund, but it's just me. <laughs> okay. So. so yeah, did you need a motion, Alexis, or? Yes, please. <clears throat> You <laughs> you want me to make the motion, Steve? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I agree. I mean, if you if they're gonna have the the whole section and have an open space fund, then it should be a fund that actually can fulfill a purpose. Right now, I mean, the funding of it can't really fulfill any purpose, right? Because it it's you know a very minor contributor to any acquisition you know, the percentage of what we could give or to contribute to a nonprofit or to anybody's acquisition of land is really small. Okay. Um, I will make a motion to, I won't do this right, I'm sorry, um, support uh, staff, Alexis and team to um, write a letter to Parks and Recs requesting um, a capital funding amount of 250000 for the upcoming fiscal year. Second. Second. Ah, beat ya. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Cool. Reed? He says aye. yes. He says aye. Good. Okay. I will get the off to them. Okay. Uh, anything else, Alexis? From you? No. Is that a hard no or a soft no? No. Do you want a cup of coffee and we can keep going until <laughs> nine or we call it a night? Very tired. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to move on to comments of commissioners. And I um, wanted to ask um, Alexis what Diane had commented about at the beginning of the meeting about um, adjusting upland review area. Is that within yeah. our... Oh, absolutely. So, you, so uh, before 2005, you didn't have a defined upland review area. Hmm. Um, and um, that was one of the changes that I made. Um, it was very ambiguous about your jurisdiction that was um, kind of tough to, to regulate. So it, was, it wasn't until 2005 where you defined um, an upland review area for each wetland and water course. Um, a lot of towns have increased their uh, wetland upland review area to 100 feet also. So mm. that's definitely something that you can uh, look into. There's a smattering of towns. Uh, I'll send you, I think Kakiwick actually, the uh, Connecticut Association of Conservation and Inland Wetland Commissions um, has done some um, research or maybe Westcott um, but I, I will find that and send that to you. Um, there's, it all goes back to, so you'd have to go through amending your regulations. You know, there's a there's a process with public hearings and and sending it off to the state and uh, whatnot. But that's uh, that's fine. If you want to look into uh, amending your regulations, there's a few other tweaks that I would recommend if you were going to um, go do that, but I can send you um, other towns and their upland review areas. Most towns now have defined upland review areas. There's still a few towns that don't, um, and their spacing um, really depends. But you have to link. The key is that whatever area of jurisdiction um, you, you propose, you have to also kind of articulate the reasoning why so it can't be um you know 2000 feet or um unless you can come up with a a very clear nexus but between those everything within 2000 feet and, and the wetland water course if that makes sense so okay. but yeah def definitely that's definitely within your purview okay well let's um yeah let's let's just um put it uh in our back pockets for now um, along with another dying suggestion was, um, you know, the updating the inventory of open spaces, which um, I think is also a good point. But um, it's late enough. Yeah. 
So, so I'll, I'll um and I'll look into that to I mean the city still does not have an adopted open space plan. Um and so um I'll talk internally to other staff and um and my you know director and chief and whatnot and try to gauge the um the um appetite for maybe putting in a a capital uh request to hire a consultant to do mm. a space plan. Mm. That'd be nice. So, Love it. I will look into that. Groovy. Any other commissioners have anything they want to ask or contribute or share? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Alexis. I don't know how this always ends up with you having homework, but that seems to just be the way it is. Uh, uh, okay. Well, then I will uh, move to adjourn. May I have a second? Second. Catherine, got it. Got um, it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Night, everybody. Good night. Um, Good night.